And welcome back, everybody, to the year-end review episode of the TV show. I'm Jay Black, joined every week by Rhea Hughes. Hello, Rhea. And Hello. Angelo Cataldi. Angelo, how was your Christmas? Was it good Christmas? It was, it was fine, thank you. Uh, I finally ended my book tour, and uh, it was uh, quite an experience. That's all I could say. <laughs> Believe that I am now a really retired. That, that well. <laughs> Other than the audio book, it is in my rear view mirror now. And it was a great experience. And thank all the people that came out for those signings. It was awesome. But here's the thing. You can still buy Angelo's book, Loud, which is in yeah. the background there if you're watching this on video. And the way you do that is you go to AngeloCataldi.com or use your Amazon gift card. Don't use it for Prime anymore. Did you guys see this real fast? They're going to charge you now to not see commercials on Prime. Yes. I really? didn't see that. If you have no. just a regular prime, you're going to see limited ads. And no. then uh, Keith Hughes, who's one of our big fans on Twitter, sent this to me. You got to pay $2 a month if you don't want to see ads, which I got to say, seems super ticky tacky to me. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. $2 a month. I would be less insulted at $5 a month. And I don't know, like... It, <laughs> Because, it, like, uh, how many more yachts does Jeff Bezos need that he's sitting yeah. there going? Great point. Yeah. Great point. We yeah. learned this in sports, Jay. Billionaire owners of teams never feel they have taken enough of the fans' money. Yes. No. They, yes. They, they always find new ways to pull out the lint on the bottom of your pocket. You know, they, they don't want anything left in there. 100 right. 100%. I saw a great tweet that said, uh, you know what? I believe that billionaires are so smart and and uh, better than the rest of us that if you took all their money away, they'd still be billionaires. They would just make it again. So let's do that. Yeah. Which I thought was I'm like, favor. Take it away and give it to ourselves. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I would charge $5 a month. That's what I would do. Anyway, listen, <laughs> this is our year-end review. We're going to talk about the best and the worst that we saw this year. But first, we have to address something that Rhea sent <laughs> to Angelo and I. She sent an email. She she rented. Now, you rented this on Apple. Is that what happened? I rented it for $14.99, and I want wow. my money back. Wow. wow. That's oh. why I'm so mad, I think, because I don't think I've ever spent that much money to rent something. And you know what? I'm the same way. I, you know, I gladly pay twenty dollars to go see a movie in a movie theater. Yeah. But if I rent it for fourteen dollars, I feel like I've been uh, overcharged somehow. So the the yeah. the movie in question is the new Alexander Payne movie, who did the Great Sideways, the Great Election, uh, a couple of other uh, movies you might be familiar with. Uh, the newest one, The Holdovers, starring Paul Giamatti, who's been in uh, uh, b billionaires for the. Uh, billions for the last couple of years on Showtime. And Rhea said she wants her mind back. She hated it. Now, Angelo, you liked the movie? I did. I would just like to hear the um, lame justification Rhea would have for that negative opinion. It was really a good movie. Rhea, what did you no. like? Oh, hold on. Be before, we ha before we do that, I want to bring in, because I want him to hear it. Okay. My, okay. my son, who loves <laughs> all movies, he is here and he is, Rhea, I got to say, furious at you for <laughs> I this love opinion it. he said i gotta go on tomorrow and talk so i'm gonna okay. switch over to to my son now he's gonna hop in the seat here and debate okay. you on this Rhea. all right and i will yes everybody will wait this is 16 year old teen black who had to wake up specifically for the show at 11 30 because it's 11 yeah, 30 it's 11 30 king you should wake up i got him some coffee here we go come on sit down there king Oh, boy. All right, Rhea, I thought it was uh, just missed my top three in movies. Oh, you God. ordered it, and you did not even get through it all, correct? No, but here's what I'll tell you to do. So, I, you know, I was sitting around the other yeah. night, and I didn't really have anything to do. So I said, let me watch this movie. It's got the ratings are phenomenal. So I put it on the holdovers, and I got to the 42nd minute, and I said, I just simply cannot do this anymore. It's horrible. However, I will say, so I, I sent you guys the email that I hated it, but much like you said to me, you guys both got back to me and said, we loved it. I said, okay, I'm going to do what I did with Hustle. You made me, force me to go back and watch the entire movie. And I wound up really liking it, right? That did not happen here. I watched the rest of the movie. I found it. Now, here's the thing that I will say is, I liked the kid, Angus. I thought he was... a uh, very well acted. By the way, he's a rookie from uh, Ocean City, New Jersey, by the way, Ange. Dominic really? Sassa. Dominic Sassa, right. Sassa. Yes. 
It was his first role. I like Divine Joy Randolph. She's a Temple grad. Paul Giamatti is Paul Giamatti in every movie. He's kind of the same. It just, it, I, I felt like that movie wanted to be something. And for me, it never got there. Wow. It's All right. Now, just, before we get Keen started, yeah. this, just so you understand, I thought Giamatti, you're right. It is, he plays the schlub and he's yeah. a schlub again. But the, the dynamics with him and Divine Joy Randolph were terrific. The young man was great. And the thing was, it was start. The whole movie is basically about a professor who gets stuck watching over some truants who did not go home. Either they had family issues or whatever. Most of them end up taking a trip anyway. And he's stuck with this one boy and the woman who works at the school. Uh, that's the basic premise yeah. of it. And, and it's at the school for over an hour. And then they go to Boston. Yeah. And they needed that because you were feeling trapped in the school. Even yeah. the Boston part, you did not like. No, I didn't. Uh, it didn't. It's just the movie. So I know, Keen, you you loved it. Yeah. But I think it's in your wheelhouse because it was with kids your age. So maybe it just didn't relate to me. What did you think, Keen? Tell us what you've thought of the whole book. I thought it was a, like I thought it was a great character study of these two, like these three characters. And I thought uh, I disagree with you. The fact that it, I thought you knew exactly what it was. It was just, you know, these characters interacting with each other and i thought it created a great beautiful story uh that made me tear up a little bit you know like uh there's some twists and turns i was not ex expecting uh and i thought you know just it was i guess it would be kind of like to me it was kind of like a holiday classic because you know like it kind of got that same kind of warm cheerful spirit that the movie had throughout it. I found nothing about it cheerful. I found it to be <laughs> unbelievably morose is the best word I can come up with. I mean, and did you find it cheerful? Um, I found it engrossing because of what Keen just said, the character. Keen, you must have been able to relate to the young guy, right? Dominic Sassa character. You were relating to him and being, you know, stuck at school and then now uh, going on this road trip. Is that what really got you? You connected with that character? I mean, I would also be, you know, mad if uh, I was left at school over the holidays. I mean, I think every, anybody would. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like, spe especially being stuck with the teacher, you know, like, I, I have some teachers at school, you know, that, you know, aren't the greatest of people. Um, uh, but I think, you know, like, I think, you know, that's like knowing that, you know, like saying, okay, and then. You get that basic premise, and you know, like you're gonna, f the movie's gonna, f you're gonna find out more, and the more you find out about these two characters, the more you kind of just, like you said, like you get more invested in them, and you know, you start to feel for them more. And I think it was one of the movies I saw that you know really captured, like to me, a kind of human experience. Yeah, that's that's it. You're exactly. You said uh, holiday classic. Could you see yourself watching this every year on the holidays? Hmm. I think I have to be in like kind of a right mood for it, okay. like because uh, it is a, like it is a slow burn, but okay. it's uh yeah. it's a fun one. Uh, I think you know, like next year, uh, I I I think you know, like I think it has that some. I don't think, Dad, did you see it? I have not. No, you have not seen it. So maybe next year. I okay. like. I would see it again with my dad just to show him it because right. it it's a great movie. Well, Keen, I just have one other thing, thing I wanted to ask. Keen, let me just ask this one thing, Rhea. It's very important. Keen, do you feel that this holiday film is better than the ones your dad has scripted? <laughs> <laughs> a million percent, yes. What? A million percent. <laughs> very upsetting to me. How dare you? <laughs> that just, is, thank you. That's real, it. You're no follow up to that. Thank you. <laughs> I wonder. Here's, Go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry. I think the movie for me, like I, I pre, see, I saw previews. Yeah. And I thought, I think they put all the funny stuff in the previews. They did, they did do that. And they, I think they presented it to me differently than what I was expecting is probably the best way I can say it. Well, watch it every Christmas until you like yeah. it. <laughs> right? It might take seven or eight, but eventually you may get to warm up to it. <laughs> and I, I would say uh, Love Always Santa is a close second, despite what my son said. How dare he, that young man. <laughs> All right. So I my original plan for our year-end list was just the best of. But, Angelo, 
I believe, and I think I can predict what his worst show of 2023 will be. No, nope. pretty really. I'm pretty sure I nope. can. You want to start with the worst show of the year? I think I think we tease that. I think we, we okay. that. I think that'll right, be the one everybody's waiting something for. Something dramatic happened over the past week that changed my pick. Oh, wow. oh my god. Oh, see, that's now that's dramatic. a tease. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, we gotta hold on. We're gonna take a commercial break. All right, we're back. Uh so uh yeah, so the way we're gonna do this is we'll start with Rio, we'll go around the circle and we'll do our three, two, and one best show of the year, and then we'll do movies uh, as okay. well. So uh, Rio, what was your bet third best show of the year? 2023 my third best shockingly is not a british show believe it or not Whoa. um it's called dark winds on amc uh season two dropped recently it's a tr it's um it's about native uh native americans set in 1970s new mexico it stars zan or zane i'm not really sure mclarnon as a tribal police lieutenant you know him from he was hansy denton fargo he was also in longmire which he was terrific at What's really unique about the show, and I didn't know it until I started, the, the mystery is great. The The landscape of New Mexico is gorgeous, but it's a show that stars and is written by mostly Native Americans. So I think they nail all that. And it's and it's got a great mystery. So that that's my third favorite. All right. Mm -hmm. Angela, what was your number three? My third favorite is on Apple TV, and it's called Lessons in Chemistry. And um, it is terrific. I, all I could say is... Uh, TV had a much better year than movies, and this is great. And I'll just give you the biggest reason. It's a great story with a stunning shit, uh, uh, twist at the end of episode two. And it is um, the, it, this is cinematography. You live in the late 50s, early 60s. They wow. recreate it so brilliantly. It must have been a very high-budgeted movie. And um, it is just terrific. And I can tell you right now, if you're looking for a good story, well told, it's all self-contained. I don't think there's any second season. Lessons in Chemistry on Apple TV. And that's Brie Larson, right? Brie Larson. And she is absolutely fantastic in it. She, if you, she's so right up there. all the other people. They're all good. If you want to talk about like whatever the ineffable thing of movie stardom is, Brie Larson has all of it. Because she's a pretty girl. But it's yep. also like you can't not look at her when she's on screen. There's just something yep. about her that you want to look at. My number three is one Angelo is going to hate, and I'm not sure that uh, Rhea is going to know about. Uh, Rick and Morty. I don't know if your son watches Rick and Morty. Uh, it's on Hulu. Season seven just dropped. Angelo's making a face. Listen to me. I've been a fan of this show since it came out. It's by Dan Harmon, who did Community, worked on the Salary Silverman program for a while. Uh, genius creator of television. They kicked off uh, Justin Roiland between six and seven because of uh, personal issues and the oh the, that thing yeah well I didn't want to get into it but yeah he yeah. was he was accused credibly of doing a lot of funky bad stuff bad stuff uh, and the the word at the uh, uh, the the production company was he was not contributing in a positive way on the creative end either and getting rid of him has I think reinvested the show it is some of the best science fiction and some of the best comedy on TV it is a goofy cartoon. But I love it. It's on Hulu, oh, and it's my third best All of the year. All the shows on TV this year, you picked the cartoon. And I bet you our audience agrees with me if they watch that show, Angela. It's fantastic, that show. You have arrested development. You're still a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring my son back in. He's more uh, he's more yeah. mature than I am. Rhea, what was your number two this year? So my number two now, I'm, I'll do the British, because I'm pretty sure I know what Angela's going to go with, and I didn't want to take it away from him. But I'm going to go with Sherwood. It's a magnificent British ser uh, mystery series available on BritBox via Prime. Six episodes, uh, all-star cast led by David Morrissey. It's basically, he's the detective in charge of two real-life murders in Nottinghamshire in 2004 in a town that was still divided and pretty much scarred by um, the infamous miner strike of 1984. They do a brilliant job of going back and forth. It's police procedural it's psychological it's history of the town of that part of england i thought it was brilliant and i loved it great sounds Very good nice. sounds good angela uh, you're number two i want to see if ria was reading my mind we worked together for a long time <laughs> my number two the bear 
I'm I didn't want to take it from you. I stole, I, didn't. It. I stole it too. Just, yeah. Here's the thing. Most of the shows that we see, this is what I've learned by these, these binge long-term shows. They never hold up after the first season. They lose something. The beer gained. The beer was even better the second season. It yes. featured the single greatest TV episode of the year yep. and one of the greatest ever done. And that was episode six, season two. The uh, appropriately enough, the Seven Fishes episode, yes. the Christmas yeah. episode, with stars galore and just brilliantly executed. It's a great show. Here's what it really impressed me. Though. After that episode, I went, "Where do you go?" Yeah. The seventh <laughs> episode was an inside look at the brother who had always been shown to be kind of a jerk, yeah. and then he goes away to learn the restaurant business. And that episode was fantastic. Are you talking about the Forks episode with Cousin Richie? Yeah, Cousin. Cousin Richie, right, exactly. And, and I just went back and watched it last week. Yeah. That's how great that episode is. Oh, and that's when you knew when they had a great six, no, episode six, and they came back with just as yep. good, a whole different style. You knew these guys know how to make a TV show. The beer is great. It's and phenomenal. I got so that was my number two as well. I think we might have the same two in one, Angelo. And I did not do what Rhea did. Uh, just to point out that that season, that episode seven with Cousin, it's uh, the only time I've ever in my life understood the philosophy behind those high-end restaurants. Yep. And that that's the right. genius of that particular episode to me because it opened the door into a world. You know, you're talking about learning about the strike in 1984 in, in Northamptonshire, land or whatever the name of that town is <laughs> yep. uh, but it opened the door to like these high end three star Michelin restaurants and like what the philosophy of them is in a way that I as a guy who eats Popeyes and loves it goes oh I can see where they're coming from here and for a show to be able to do the drama but also explain the world is is uh, phenomenal to me so Jay, yeah it's funny that you said that because I went out last night um my son actually took me out to Del Frisco's last night for my wow. birthday which is later in the week but um he took me out last night I appreciated the way they do things much more having watched that show because I understood just the little things they do that you go, you don't even notice half the time. Yeah. But that show made you notice. It Very did. nice. Yeah. Hundred percent. And I didn't know. Ha happy birthday! Wait, what day is your birthday, Rhea? Friday. It's the 29th. Happy birthday, Rhea. Happy many, birthday. Many, many more. Great. Thank you. Uh, what was your top show of the year, Rhea Hughes? Okay, it's Slow Horses, which I obviously reviewed uh, with you guys several times because it's now season three. Dropped on November 29th. It's on Apple TV. Uh, they gave you like the first two right away, but it's been weekly since the final episode drops today. So when I am done with our show today, I, it's and like you said with the bear, it's hard to see a show that debuted so brilliantly in season one of Slow Horses. Very good in season two. Came back with a banger in season three. Um, it's led by Jackson Lamb, who's played by Gary Oldman, who's just brilliant. Um, one of his assistants gets kidnapped by a former agent whose girlfriend was murdered. And there's just, it, I was so upset at the end of episode five last week because I went, I have to wait an entire week. Oh. That's how great this season three of Slow Horses is. I can't recommend it I enough. Know. When you're looking forward to it, when you can't wait for the net, that's when you know. Yep. That's, you got something great. Slow All right, An Angelo, I'm almost positive we have the same yep. number one. So we'll Let's stay here. It, but yeah. let's Three, two, two one, one, succession. One hundred percent. You the best, saw Jay, because you discovered it way before I did. Yeah. I, I think that this has got a a good uh argument for being not just the top show of the year, but you know, one of the top shows of all time. Certainly the top show of the decade. Uh there is uh, no better comedy on TV than succession. There's no better drama on TV than succession. Uh, it just goes to show you if you give a guy who is a, a phenomenal writer basically an unlimited acting budget, you know, because every corner of this show has got somebody from Broadway or, you know, Adrian Brody coming in for a single episode in season three and knocking it out of the park. Uh, every corner of the show is filled with great acting. And, uh, you know, the you want to talk about the greatest episode, uh, Connor's Wedding. Uh, where they kill off the the patriarch 
it, it, any other show would kill off the patriarch in in episode nine and deal with the fallout in 10 but to do it in episode three and and just have everybody at the same time go well where do we go from here and then land the plane anyway is is phenomenal if you haven't watched the show i'm jealous of you because you get to sit and watch all four seasons in a row and read the maybe the best american novel is on tv and it's called succession and it's written by a brit uh, well, Angela, your you thoughts know. on it. Let me just say this, Jay. Uh, if nothing else came from participating in this podcast, <laughs> your annoying insistence <laughs> on me to keep trying succession, because I tried twice and failed, and I did not go back to the start. I started in season four. I was there for the death of the patriarch, which was, as you said, so brilliantly executed. You're stuck in a plane and you're down at a wedding. And the yeah. juxtaposition was just fantastic. And when it was over, I took it to the end. And then I started all over and did the whole, wow. did the whole thing. Yeah. And Rhea, wow. How did I miss this? There are some of the greatest performances I've, I've ever seen. You're right. A Brit wrote it, Rhea, and is brilliantly scripted. Bro. And you would think, well, they're dead. The, the main guy is dead in episode three, and they got seven more episodes. Wow. And it was all insanely compelling. It was fantastic. And it was, yeah, you're right. It's in my top 10 all time, Jay. And it's definitely the best TV show of the year on Max. Don't miss it. If yeah, you've seen it, it, binge it again. And Rhea, <laughs> I'm going to your house and getting the gun out and I'm forcing you to watch it at gunpoint because you will love it. I it's promise so good. you, you will love it. It's so It's not on my list right now, but maybe next vacation. <laughs> uh I, I'm going to I'm going to hop in uh, since we uh, started with uh, we stayed with you, Angela, on that. I want to do my worst show and I want to end with you on the worst show. My worst show of uh, 2023 was Bup Kiss on Peacock. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, you know, you know, not to harp on Pete David's drug issues, which I, I know are still uh, gripping him. Uh, you want to talk about you? You take Succession. You have the best cast in the universe, and and uh. you use it to great uh, uh, use. Uh, the you have a phenomenal cast. You have Brad Garrett, who I love. You have uh, Eddie Falco, Edie Falco, who's Edie. fantastic. You have jo you have uh, uh, Joe Pesci coming out of retirement for this, and it's wasted on some of the worst comedy that I've seen and a bad storyline. Uh, none of it sort of fits or makes sense. And it it's was hideous. Shame. I mean, let's just be real. It was. Yeah. It was. The, there's. There's not a worse show out there than that move than that show. Yeah, well, there the, is one. There is one. <laughs> but let me just say, um, Jay, you nailed it on this show. And yes. the thing about it is, uh, Joe Pesci. There's now a story that Joe Pesci went to Pete Davidson afterwards and went. You had me come out of retirement. <laughs> it's garbage. If you can get through the first episode, the pilot of Bupkis, yeah, you need psychological therapy, <laughs> maybe electroshock therapy. Yeah. That is how bad that show is. Yep. It's putrid. And anybody that thinks otherwise is an idiot. All right. That show is offensive, but it's not the worst show of the year. All right. Well, hey, Rhea, I want to hear your thoughts. What's your worst show of the year? Bob Kiss was on. Well, that was the, that was for me. I because that I generally can get through at least. Like I, I didn't like holdovers, but I watched forty two minutes of it, and then I went back and watched the rest of it. I really struggled after the Edie Falco because maybe it was Eddie Falco who talked her into doing that scene. <laughs> it was offensive, and yeah. to me, that's the worst. It, it was, was offensive. Really it, it was offensive. Like that joke would have fit in in a '90s sex comedy. I feel yeah. like we've had 25 years of comedy yeah. evolution to get past all that. Like, yes. it, if you don't know the joke, don't, you're lucky. Don't look it up. Yeah. You don't want to know no. what what happened no, to Edie no. Falco. Mm. All right, now, Angel, we teased this. What yeah. What is your worst show? Right. I I thought it had to have been the the curse. The curse was leading not only the season, <laughs> but it was leading forever as the worst show yeah. because you got Emma Stone, you got Nathan Fielder, you have people that I love doing an awful, awful show. But I told you I would, because I'm retired, I have nothing to do. I tortured myself and kept watching it to see if it would improve. And episode seven, not only improved, it was excellent. Mm 
Wow, and Emma wow. Stone dominated it. And Emma Stone is such a brilliant performer, even in garbage. She turned garbage into gold for one wow. episode. It was really good. And it knocked it down to third for the year. Whoa. Wow. This was second. And the worst show, and I want to thank David Zasloff again, because uh, <laughs> he, he runs HBO and Discovery wow. and tons of stuff. The Idol. Is uh, so oh, yes, yeah, back. Right, they yep. put so much money into that show, and then they hired as the the lead actor the weekend. And here's the best way I could describe the weekend's performance. He performed like Wednesday morning. Oh right? my god, he wasn't close <laughs> to the weekend. Yeah. He was awful. The show was abysmal. They tried to make it sexy, and it was just <laughs> It was offensive. I just gave them extra credit to be the worst, Jay, because they spent so much money, and Zaslav put so much behind that show, Yeah, and no one liked it. That was by the third th episode, by the way, I didn't see the third. <laughs> by the third episode, everybody had bailed on it. Yeah, it's, uh, they spent $12 million an episode. Oh! Twelve God. million dollars used to get you five seasons of Star oh. Trek, and they couldn't get. Yeah, that's uh, it so, has been canceled. By the way, it was canceled. It was. Oh, thank they, God! Remember, they were going to do six episodes, and then they came out, and they're like, "As it oh. turns out, we're only doing five. We only oh, have five, and oh, we meant bad. to do five all along." Yeah, that was a very good choice. Now, real quick question before we go to our movies, Angelo did did the show seventh episode redeem any of the first six episodes of the? No, curse? no, no. It okay. will still stink because <laughs> Nathan Field, the character, is one of the worst characters in the history of television. Okay. All right. And prove to me, look, he has done great stuff. Nathan for you is great. The rehearsal was great. In that, he played himself and it was good. Now he's attempting to act unsuccessfully. And mm -hmm. it is it is so awful. But Emma Stone took that. He was not in much of any of the seventh episode. And her ability, she's got a movie coming out that everybody said she's going to win the Oscar for. you got to see what a great actor she is. Yeah. She took garbage. And by the end of the seventh episode, you cared about her. You cared about what she was doing. Because now she realizes that Nathan Field is a horrible husband. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's, I, you know, I got to say, I just rewatched Easy A, her sort of yeah. debut oh. with my daughter. She's just great. You're, you're absolutely she's right. right. She's great. All right, let's do our movies. Let's do this uh, round robin for our our first, yeah. uh, our three and two. We'll just go quick. What was your yeah. third best movie of the year, Rhea Hughes? Operation Mincemeat, available on Netflix. It's a British movie. It's actually a real-life mission to trick Hitler into thinking the Allies were going to invade Greece instead of Sicily. It's got a premise so outlandish that it can only be fiction, except it was completely true. Basically, yeah. they were getting a corpse of someone dressing it up in military uniforms with documents and dumping it off the coast of Spain in the hope that it would land in the Germans' hands and they'd be faked out. And one of the uh, British intelligence officers who came up with the plan, Ian Fleming, creator of James Bond. Wow. And uh, it's phenomenal. It's a great, if you like World War II movies, you will love this movie. And I just want to say to Hollywood casting directors, I'm available to play a corpse. You don't even need makeup. <laughs> just put me in. Angela, what was your number three? Um, I wanted to get a documentary in here. And uh, the best documentaries are ones that tell you a great story and inspire you. And on Apple TV, it's still there. It's called Still, and it's Michael J. Fox. And Michael J. Fox, you will see what he endures now in uh, latter stages of Parkinson's. And you will see how uplifting he is about his life and it's just spectacular and uh, i i assure you the uh, it, 10 minutes in you'll say i can't i i have to watch this this is spectacular it was just it's overwhelming it's great and it, it's it deserves mention in our top three i'm glad you uh brought up a documentary because I, I tried to find one to get in there and i did not so that was uh good angela uh my number three i mentioned i think last week godzilla minus one I got to tell you, I'm joking. You're, you're shaking your head. It is currently the highest uh, grossing um, uh, foreign film of the year by a long shot. America agrees with me, Angelo and Rhea. It is a great human story that also has a radioactive dinosaur. And I believe 
in 2024, all movies will have a radioactive dinosaur at some point in them because that's how popular Godzilla if minus you're one 16, is. I'm sure you'll love it. That's right. right. Go see right. Godzilla minus one. I, I need to talk just to Rhea for a second. Here. Rhea, <laughs> yes. we had Jay Black as a TV critic on yes. the show for 10 years, right? Yep. Yes. Did you know that he would end up going with Rick and Morty and a Godzilla movie? <laughs> Godzilla. That, it's too disappointing, Jay. Yeah, Listen. We have found a different TV critic. I, we should have looked harder. I'm okay. going to I'm gonna say this. I'm going to bet a pinky finger. Yeah. If you guys watch this, yep. you're going to come back and apologize humbly to me at how great it is. It's currently I in the theater. Give you my pinky finger if I actually ever watch it. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. It never happened. Rhea, what was your number two? So I actually do have a documentary, uh, Buried, the 1982 Alpine Meadows Avalanche, available on Prime, Netflix, Apple this, TV. Yeah. I loved it. It's a documentary of an avalanche uh, that led to a five-day search for eight missing people at a ski resort in Lake, Hot in Lake Tahoe. Riveting, incredibly detailed with the eyewitness accounts and lifelike reenactment. It's as dramatic as you can get with the documentary. You know, the fury of Mother Nature. She can't be beat. And a plot twist you will never see coming and you don't normally get in documentaries. Really? I, I started it, Rhea, and I didn't get to it because I kept waiting for the people to get buried in the avalanche. And it was taking a long time to ramp up. <laughs> and I kept going, well, when's the snow going to start coming down? <laughs> I, I and never try to get it. When you tell me there's a twist, I want to see it. There's a big... I'm just telling you, I've recommended it to like five different people and yeah. they all love it. The twist. twist. Yeah, the twist. I'm telling you, it's it blew my mind. I love a twist. I got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, what was your number two? My number two, uh, it's ironic. The two in one I both saw in theaters. They're really pretty much the only movies. I saw one other one in the whole year. Um, Air. It is great. a great story of Nike and uh, Matt Ooh. Damon is brilliant in it. Great it's movie. Basically, it's basically how... Um, was he Sonny Vaccaro? I guess he, yeah. this guy basically, when no one else thought, you know, you there was any chance to rescue Nike, um, he came up with the plan with Michael Jordan and and he executed it. He's great in it. Um, Affleck, Ben Affleck is really great yeah. in it, and it's just a really good story. Uh, you'll like it. It's it's not these kind of movies aren't made much anymore. There's yeah. no explosions, there's no. no. There's, effect it's just a really great story with great acting air on amazon prime right now it's a throwback to a time where you could do a movie by putting two movie stars in a movie and yeah. having Shocking. them talk to one another you're right and, you got, and that was actually going to be my number two angelo it's now my number four because right before we did this podcast i rewatched barbie with my daughter oh, oh wow and listen to me. Have you seen it, Angela? You're putting your head in your I hand. Tried, no, I tried to start it, and and um, I wanted to hurt myself. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I absolutely adored it. I thought there are very few movies that both handle high concept and also send a message to the people watching. I think it uh, had a very interesting thing to say about the patriarchy that we all sort of live under. And I got to tell you, uh, Greta Gerwig, who I've liked forever. I've enjoyed her work in tons of different stuff. To see her transform from a uh, actress into a filmmaker and uh, the filmmaker on the biggest stage possible. This was a billion dollar movie uh, and she is uh, going to go on to great things. So uh, if you get a chance to check it out, it's on Max and it's phenomenal. Clark loved it. So he went with a bunch of his friends, a bunch of 14 year, year olds. They thought it was great. It's funny, uh, and I'm going to tell you something. I have I, I said it when it came out, but you know it's going to be down to Robert Downey Jr. in the movie that's my number one, and uh, uh, Ryan Gosling in uh, Barbie for best supporting actor because he is the best supporting actor. He's phenomenal as Ken. He's going to win for Ken. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, Rhea, what was your number one? So my number one. It's funny. It's an almost similar name as my number two, The Burial. Starring Jamie Foxx and Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, I believe it's uh, yeah, on Prime. The fact that you could make a movie entertaining out of a lawsuit by a funeral director against a big corporation. Jamie, uh, Jamie Foxx deserves some kind of award for the way he acts in this movie. He is phenomenal in it. And it's based on a true story, which I loved. Um, but he, Jamie Foxx's performance 
in this movie. I, I'm just telling you, I think it was better. I think, Angela, you actually said it when we reviewed it recently. It was better than Ray. It was. He was, and yep. it's a great movie. You're 100 it is. right. And he's the reason why. He's this, yep. this really uh, uh, outgoing, crazy guy. And then he starts to rein it in toward the end. And you see the yep. way he changes. It's just brilliant. He, he is such a great actor. And he, he had a horrible health scare right after. Yeah. He did, yep. But, but he's okay now. And you've got to see the burial. It's great. It's fantastic. You're right, Rhea. Good one. Um, I, I'm in a terrible position right here, Jay, yeah. because we have agreed on a lot of things. And when we have deviated, I have had excellent other suggestions. And you have had Rick and Morty and Godzilla <laughs> and Barbie. So I'm right. I'm beginning to question my own. But again, <laughs> I believe we are in sync on number one. Yeah. I went there at your behest because you had done a Barb and Hyber day. Yep. You had seen Barbie and Oppenheimer, my number one. But Oppenheimer is unbelievable yeah. it's three hours yeah you shouldn't want to see a three-hour movie it's too long cillian murphy gives the performance of his career and the performance of the year he will win an oscar if he doesn't there will be it will be robbery it'll be a travesty yeah and it is just and i watched it in imax so Ooh. i was overwhelmed by it and and it i'm telling you it's just it's a great story. There is special effects because they dropped a bomb, but um, yeah. it's great. I just got to tell you, it's great because Cillian Murphy in it is so good. And, and you know, and there's so many other great performances. You're right. Robert Downey Jr. is great at it too. There's a whole bunch of terrific performances, but uh, it was the best movie of the year. And, and I'm going to say this. There, I've heard a lot of people have a little bit of pushback. They say, I don't want to put this as number one because it feels like the easy choice for number one. Because, uh, and you know what? Sometimes that's because it's the best movie and it's okay yeah. to put the best movie number one. The guy, Christopher Nolan, did a three hour movie about the, a, a physicist that's half in black and white and it made a billion dollars worldwide. Yeah. That's how good it was. People said, I got to go see this talky talk movie about a bunch of physicists trying to build a bomb. And I'd shout out to Josh Hartnett, who looked like Superman You're in right. the movie. And I wrote that guy off in the late 90s. I thought he was, oh, a, yeah. I, I used to call him Josh Hardwood because he acted like a piece of wood. Uh, <laughs> and he pops in and my God, not only does he look great, he grew into his look. He yeah. was great as his best friend or, you know, his his uh, theoretical versus uh, uh, experimental physicist. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, I don't think you can get it on streaming right now. You have to buy it still, uh, which, uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's well worth the money. It's great. I have not seen it, but my son told me the other day I need he watched it. He liked it. And he's like, he goes, you would he when he tells me he knows what I like. He told me I will love it. So I am going to watch it. And the story okay. I told. You don't pay the fourteen ninety five too much pressure after what happened with the holdovers. Wait till it's cut rate. I don't. Oh, want I will to open Oppenheimer too. I'm concerned yeah. about that. The story I told when I saw it with Barbenheimer, the kids behind me were there for Barbie. They were dressed as Barbie yeah. and as Ken, and as the they're talking, talking, talking. By minute twenty, they are enraptured by this movie they stop talking i don't have to say anything to them because they're watching the movie it's fantastic uh real quick let's go through our worst movies of the year Rhea, what was your number one worst movie that you saw probably the holdovers oh yeah the holdovers <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go with the holdovers since i just crushed it oh right. um i uh i i'm just i didn't do it i just did the idol that's my worst tv okay. show. i didn't have a worse movie i got I, a worse movie for everybody uh yeah. you can avoid it on max it's called the flash uh, oh. I I like superhero movies. I'm a big yeah. child. Uh, oh. This one felt, you know, the end of the DCEU is is happening now with uh, Aquaman. It probably should have happened seven years ago. Um, there's not a lot of joy came out of these movies, and The Flash is uh, fairly joyless. So that's my pick for the worst movie. But I will my pick for the best podcast, guys. Is this one yes. right here? Yes. Well, we got a review. Just yeah, so review. Yes. these are the best things we got. So so while you start, Rhea, what are the best three okay. TV shows right now? And where can people see them? All right. Let me just bring this back up because I, I kind of put it all. Okay. The best three TV shows are Slow Horses on Apple TV, 
Sherwood, which is on BritBox via Prime, and uh, Dark Winds, which is on AMC. It's terrific. It's real out of my genre, but I highly recommend that. Best three TVs for me, Succession on Max, The Beer on Hulu, Lessons in Chemistry on Apple TV. Jay? My best three, you already heard Succession and The Bear, but uh, everyone should go out and check Rick and Morty Season 7 on Hulu. <laughs> you won't regret it. Trust me. All right, and Rhea, best movies? My best movies, Operation Mincemeat. That is on Netflix. Buried, The Alpine Meadows Avalanche is available on Prime Netflix and Apple, and The Barrier... Burial is available on Prime. I got Oppenheimer. At, uh, it's on Amazon Prime, but you got to pay $5.95. Uh, number two is Air on Amazon Prime and still is on uh, Apple TV. Jay? Uh, for me, Godzilla, go see it in the theater. It's <laughs> uh, you, you won't regret it. Barbie on Max and Oppenheimer, of course, on Amazon Prime for five ninety five. Can't miss. That's a good five ninety five spent. And uh, don't watch uh, The Flash on Max. You, you'll thank me for that later. And if you would like to see a steaming pile of garbage, watch The Idol on Max. It's the worst TV <laughs> show of the year and one of the worst ever. Guys, uh, oh, I want to, I mean this. It is, I can't believe we've done this. This is our 70th episode, I think, wow. or 69th, something like that. Yeah. It's really moving up. Uh, and it, it, we did the whole year together. I really appreciate you coming on and, and doing this with me. And I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Mr. Clapper. Uh, for uh, being our producer and putting this together for us because uh, we couldn't do it without him. Check out his podcast, the Continental Sports Podcast. And uh, that kid's a real up and comer. He's going to do great things. So uh, check that out. But uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me. We oh. One last thing. One last thing. I would like to offer a happy birthday to my good friend, Rhea Hughes. <laughs> I believe, I, I don't know for sure, I believe 41 today. Again. She, yes. She started our show. She was nine. <laughs> exactly. Wow. But but uh Rhea, happy birthday too. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are Thank great. You. Thanks. See and, you next week. Uh, see you next week and happy new year to everybody listening. Yep. Have a good one.